Okay, today we are going to talk about this VFD. They call him uh, Hyun Byung inverter. Right in here is 230 volt input, three phase motor controller. is a four horsepower, three kilowatt capable. And I do have right in here the motor is actually out of this pump is a three horsepower. We are going to run on for this experiment right now. As you see, I already connected three phase right in here. This motor is a six pole. If I do not connect the ribbon cable that I have right in here, you can use this VFD as it is controlling on via this keypad right in here. But if we connect in this connector right in here, I have a microcontroller that with a, a graphical user interface that I made for the iPhone and iPad, we, I can control this VFD for turning them on, turning them off, change the speed and change the direction of the motor. So uh, let me just show you the, uh, how this thing does going to work and I'm going to explain to you how did we put the component together. To doing so, I'm just going to turn on the, give a power to this VFD, 230 volt. It's going to take a little time, then it's going to come on. After the unit is coming on, it's going to be in an off position. The unit is on, but it does not transferring any power to the motor. To doing so, I, because the connector is already connected, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I'm connected to the server or the router that is controlling the microcontroller. And yes, it is already connected and it can be secure as I made them as a secure router. Then we're going to go ahead and launch our application. You can buy this application via the Apple Store. They call them Touch OSC. When I launch them, you can see the name of it. And then I generate this screen right in here that a GUI, your graphical user interface. I'm going to explain to you a little and then I'm going to start operating them. It has a little button on the side, it says safe start, and then the red button in the top. To turning the unit on, you have to hold the safe start and then press on the start. Other than that, the motor does not come in on. Then it has a, a different button for the forward or reverse. It has a dial for the speed control uh, that it shows the speed in the middle of the dial. It has a, uh, another dial for the timer that you can set up when the motor goes off. And I do have three bottom in, uh, bottom for the preset speed control. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the unit on. I press this button and then I press in the top. The motor is on right now. I select which direction do I want to go. I'm selecting forward and then I'm going to press on the slow. So it's going to start running with a 1000. This is a preset for the 1000 RPM. And you can see in the middle of the screen, it shows in the middle of this dial, it shows 1000 RPM. I can go for the mid speed that is going to be 1800 RPM or the fast speed that's going to be 3500 RPM. And also in your display uh, keypad, it shows the same uh, information. So I'm just going to put them in a low speed. I am going right now forward, and you can see the LED right in here, it shows forward. On the display keypad, shows forward to now. At the same time that it goes slow, I can uh, put them in the reverse, for instance. I'm going to put them on the reverse, and then you can see the motor is going to slow down. The LED right in here on the display is going to go to the reverse, and then it's going to ramp up to the slow speed that we do have at 1000 RPM. Now, while the motor is running, we can just grab this dial and then change the speed on fly, whatever we want to, then on variable speed. So right now it's going to ramping up to the speed that I set them up, whatever it shows in the middle of the scene. Okay, let me just see what's number. It must be around 1400 RPM, yes. And then I can raise them up to the different number, 2200 RPM, and that thing is eventually going to get to that point. At the same time, again, as I said, you can press the forward button, the motor is slowing down to the stop and then slowly ramping up to the 1092 RPM that the dial is showing right in here. If you want to shut the system off, you just press this button in the top and the motor is going to stop. Again, if you want to turn it on, you cannot just press this button. You have to hold. If I press this, it just keeps saying off. I have to hold this safe start and then press on this and then the motor is going to come out and then I can operate you know for the forward reverse with any speed that I want and then you can turn them off in this fashion too. I have another dial in this side that 
it started from the at the beginning if you do not touch this timer the motor is set up at 180 minutes or three hours after that the motor goes off if you want to change the timing when the motor goes off you can grab this dial and moving them up and down it started with a one minute till 180 minute the increment of the minute and then when you let it go that is for instance right now in a 42 minutes the motor if it was on it was going to go off so now let me shut the motor off and i'll run you through the all of the graphical user interface and the uh, software that we install in the microcontroller which kind of microcontroller is and everything else let me put this one down uh, one more second let me show them something else too let me get the phone right in here we do have the same software for the uh, uh iphone as well too let me see if this thing coming down okay Again, if you're just going to go to the OSC launch cinema, since that I couldn't put all of this graphical that I do have in an iPad in a one page, I divide them in a three pages. So one, the first page is going to be for turning on the unit, reverse and forward, and I put a dial for the uh, speed control. And then the second page, when you go, I do have a preset, uh, some uh, speed on it. And in the bottom of the page right in here that you cannot see them clearly right now, it shows the speed that is going to run. And it, on the third page, I do have uh, another sliding uh, button that is defined how long the uh, motor is going to stay on and the time is going to show right in here. On. The reason that it doesn't show right now because it's not connected through the internet to the uh, microcontroller. Now let's just talk about the hardware. What is the hardware is about? The hardware built out of the um, Uno, Arduino, Uno uh, microcontroller. I do have another set of it right in here. It's going to include of the three board. The bottom board is going to be the uh, Arduino Uno. They just plug in. You don't need to solder any wire or anything. This is Arduino Uno. These are about $10. Each one of these boards is about $10. You can buy them through the eBay. The second layer is going to be the relay control. Because some of the control that I do have, it need to have a relay. The Arduino does not have the capability of driving them. So I'm using three of these relay out of the four. So one left for the different application. And the top layer is going to be in, in, uh, Arduino Internet Shield that is going to sit right in the top to connect it to the, the server or router that we do have. This mini router that we do have right in here is Zytol. This is the brand name right in here and it look like this. The range of it is about 100 yards. If you want the farther distance, you can use a different type of router. You have to make sure it has a LAN connection because you need to connect you know, to the internet right in here. And as I said, this has currently about a 100 yard uh, distance. I can get the signal to the, from the 100 yard to it. So uh, it's running with a five volt. The Arduino is running with the five volt that we do have right in here. Now let's just talk about the wiring, how the wiring works. So as I explained, we do have six wire coming out of the Arduino stack right in here, Arduino stack board right in here to the via this ribbon cable to our VFD or variable frequency drive. I'm going to explain what are those six wires. Uh, four of them is going to come in through the relay, DCM, reset, reverse, and forward. <clears throat> and uh, one relay is connecting in the reset to the dcm the other relay connecting uh, reverse to the dcm and the third relay is connecting the forward to the dcm these are for turning on the unit for the speed control variable speed control i'm using two wire according to the manual that it came with this vfd i will show it to you guys that's going to be acm and vi those are the it is coming from the Arduino through the PWM or pulse width modulation with the number of the pulse that it's giving it, it's going to causing that the motor goes to the different speed. Now I'm going to show you this manual that it came with the VFD. If you take a look at this schematic right in the corner, in this corner it shows you can put a potentiometer for variable speed. It can work with a 5 volt or 10 volt. I select to use the 5 volt because output of the Arduino is 5 volt. And then uh, for my relay control, I went to the page 37 
of my manual I don't know what page it's going to be for you guys right in here if you're looking at this corner it has a three push button switch I replaced those push button switch with a three relay that had been controlled via the Arduino microcontroller that's about it and now let's just talk about the software so as I explained the hardware is going to be this stack of the uh, microcontroller and the uh, the server or the router that you do have. As far as the software for the controlling the writing the sketch for the uh, Arduino, you know the software. This software is free. You can download them and write your own sketch. This is the sketch that I write for the this application that I just mentioned to you guys. Let me just open this thing up. It's about 150 line or so. It's connecting to the server and then it's gonna to uh, uh, receive all of the information uh, via the uh, router and translating them to the different action and responding to the output of the microcontroller. And uh, they call this one a sketch, as I said. After you write them, you can compile them and upload it to your uh, uh, microcontroller via USB. The other software that I do have that I generate the GUI, I use this Touch OSC editor. Again, this software is free, but if you want to put them in your iPhone or iPad, you have to pay $5 to buy the application for your phone. After you generate the, for instance, this is right now, I generated for the iPad right in here, this GUI generator. As you can see, it has a LEDs. If I click on this LED, it has a name and what page is going to. If I call for instance, uh, click on this dial right in here, it says it's a rotary number one. I want the value be started from zero till 255. And for instance, if I call on this timer, I want the value between 21 till 3600. I want to be the same way you can generate all of this via this GUI. And then after you're done with it, if your phone or iPad uh, is on the same network as your uh, laptop or desktop that you do have, you can just click on this sync and upload this one to your phone. So that's about it. Let me just shut this thing off.